the Super Heavy Boosters test campaign timeline has recently received an update from Elon Musk Booster 7 has advanced considerably both B7 and S and 24 vehicles. Have their engines evaluated during numerous static fire tests. Over the recent several months as well as cryogenic proof tests to evaluate structural integrity on August 9 and the 11th B7 began the most crucial phase of its flight qualification procedure with two back-to-back -back static fires each of which ignited one of the 20 Raptor engines that were installed both seemed to succeed. So SpaceX sent B-7 back to its Boca Chica, Texas factory to reinstall a whole set of 33 engines before sending it back to the launch pad two weeks later. SpaceX attempted to ignite three of the 33 Raptors on Rocket 7 on August 31st a two-engine test that was largely successful only had one engine that failed to ignite. While the SpaceX conduct a number of ignition-free spin prime tests two of which seemed to turn on all 33 engines without igniting them. Then on September 16th the September 19th respectively SpaceX conducted tests using seven spin prime engines to hint at its next major objective as soon as the second seven engine spin prime test was over. SpaceX fueled boosters seven with propellant repeatedly identical steps and fired the same seven engines for roughly five seconds there were no overt problems and comments. Afterwards suggested that the test proceeded smoothly at sea level a single Raptor 2 engine can produce 230 tons of thrust or roughly 500,000 pounds thus if it were multiplied by seven engines running simultaneously the push would be approximately 365,000 pounds or 1,600 tons. Two months later the business made history by simultaneously lighting B-7 and 14 of the 33 Raptor engines Musk later provided reassurance that the test went smoothly this test which doubled the quantity from the previous one in September and involved testing more Raptor engines concurrently than ever. Before was an essential step in the creation of a Starship the booster produced 3,220 tons of thrust which is equivalent to 7.1 million pounds of propulsion power during the static fire which lasted 10 seconds. The Starship vehicle briefly assumed the title of the most potent operational rocket in the entire globe. However the vehicle has 33 engines in total so there is still a lot of work to be done and more potential thrust before takeoff. In an increasingly unusual update, SpaceX's CEO said that the company would conduct a 20-second engine test after the test potentially one more static burn and then attempt an orbital launch wouldn't it be interesting if all 33 engines had to respond to one more static fire. A static firing super heavy with all 33 Raptor engines fitted is capable of producing a total thrust force of 7,600 metric tons, or around 16,750,000 pounds. Additionally SpaceX would need to fill the booster with nearly 3,400 tons of propellant or roughly 7 million pounds for a full wet dress rehearsal which has also never been done with Super Heavy. However there are still several milestones before Starship would be ready for an orbital launch one of which is a static fire test of a Super Heavy with all necessary Raptor engines installed for Booster 7 and its near-term successors that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines capable of generating a total of around 7,600 metric tons or 16.7 million pound force of thrust. SpaceX has done tests of up to 14 engines at a time but to date they still have yet to fire all 33 Raptor engines simultaneously that most likely is related to a spin prime test on July 11 that SpaceX suffered. What NASA euphemistically calls a high-energy event when propellants ignited under the booster damaging it although Musk's space company afterward repaired the booster and implemented corrective. Actions afterward that failure resulted in corrective actions to increase systems engineering and risk management rigor in subsequent tests. As you know both of the last two times that SpaceX returned the Booster 7 to its South Texas Starship factory after completing several tests for upgrades involved in fortifying Super Heavy Booster 7's thrust section to ensure it can survive. During 33 engine stag fire tests that means firing 33 engines at once is a really big problem for SpaceX for a test with 33. Raptor's SpaceX needs to fully fill a super heavy booster for the first time depending on the storage situation that process 
will likely begin by filling Booster 7 with about 2,500 tons of liquid nitrogen which will fill up the tank by two-thirds if SpaceX also temporarily fills one of the orbital tank farm's liquid oxygen or methane tanks with nitrogen it could fully load Booster 7. With around 3,500 tons of nitrogen at least according to SpaceX's own website. That's about the same weight as the propellant that Super Heavy is designed to lift off with if that cryoproof goes well SpaceX will then likely perform one or several wet dress rehearsals ultimately. Filling Booster 7 with approximately 2-900 tons of cryogenic oxygen and 500 tons of cryogenic methane out of an abundance of caution Super Heavy B7 will likely have far less propellants aboard during almost all of its static fire tests. But a full static fire with a full load of propellants simulating most pre launch conditions will likely be one of the last main goals of any static fire campaign at full thrust. 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely burn around 25 tons of propellants per second, which is 50% more powerful all than NASA's retired Saturn V moon rocket. It'll also produce a level of thrust seven times greater than Falcon 9. Regardless a huge amount of propellants will be needed the Soviet N-1 rocket is the only other rocket that comes close to this it was a similar size to Starship and also featured a similar layout of 30 and K-15 engines arranged in two rings. But sadly each of the four attempts to launch an N-1 failed with the second attempt resulting in the vehicle crashing back. Onto its launch pad shortly. After liftoff and causing one of the largest artificial non-nuclear explosions in human history many of the failures were caused by explosive engines which led to a chain of other problems during launch. The M1 program was suspended in 1974 and officially cancelled in 76. With its innovative insight, SpaceX can now hopefully be able to shut down a failing Engine before it turns into a live grenade in fact the engine problems on the N1 were never discovered prior to launch. Because the Soviets didn't have a large enough testing facility to static fire the massive N1's first stage on that note it's worth mentioning that not only the rocket itself, but also the whole launch system could cause problems. During a full 33 Raptor test the entire launch infrastructure surrounding the rocket plays a crucial role in keeping the rocket safe this is what Musk calls stage zero which is at least as hard as the booster or ship when 33 powerful Raptor engines are involved even nominal pre-burner testing will likely produce a massive fireball that could engulf Super Heavy's aft if not the entire booster with flames for static fire testing. Raptors typically produce a smaller and briefer but still substantial fireball during the shutdown creating another potential source of damage to any sensitive hardware located anywhere on or in Booster 7's thrust section. As such super heavy aero covers may be just as important for surviving static fires as they'll be for surviving launches and landings this is a problem that SpaceX is hoping to solve with its Boca Chica facility it's worth noting that there are some special points in the star. Based launch pad normally launch pads use a flame diverter to deflect the intense exhaust away from the rocket and the launch pad instead SpaceX is building a separate steel mount and water-cooled thruster diverter designed to stand up to the fury of a super heavy booster without allowing the rocket's plume to dig a crater into the ground after every ignition while choosing to pursue a dramatically different launch pad designed for Starship may at first glance seem risky. SpaceX actually has more than a decade of experience building and operating similar mountain flame diverter setups at its McGregor, Texas rocket development and test facilities a step further NASA itself. Once heavily relied on similar technologies and strategies to rapidly build test and fly rockets larger than anything that came before them it's safe to say that Super Heavy will require a diverter that is far larger still to survive thrust equivalent to more than three Falcon Heavy rockets. But that very diverter and launch mount are already well on their way to completion at Starbase launch pad for now B7 is still being upgraded at the high bay. But most likely it'll be rolled back to the launch site as early as next week nevertheless a 33 engine static fire will be riskier and more challenging than any other test the prototype has. Completed to date thus there's no real chance that Starship will be ready for its first orbital launch this year. However Super Heavy B7 will probably carry significantly less propellant throughout practically all of its static fire tests out of an abundance of caution. 
one of the last primary objectives of any static fire campaign would likely be a full static fire with a full load of propellants matching the majority of pre-launch conditions propellers will be required in large quantities. Because 33 Raptor 2 engines will likely burn about 25 tons or about 55,000 pounds of propellant per second while operating at full force as early as November 17 static fire of the extremely heavy B-7 had anticipated to start and if all goes as planned space decks may start preparing the same. Rocket for the debut orbital launch of the spaceship. In fact Musk wants to establish the first colony on Mars within the next 20 years and believes that hundreds of brave astronauts will be able to do so by the year 2050. To return astronauts to the moon by 2025. In the meantime as a task carried out by Crew-5 last month the Falcon 9 rocket carry the Crew Dragon spacecraft and its four crew members into orbit. However viewers of the live feed noticed some weird shifts just before the rocket disappeared into space by performing. Crewed launches Starling trips reusing rockets and preparing starships for launch. SpaceX has every right to feel a little overworked teenage onlookers also noted the NASA meatball emblem that was visible on SpaceX's most recent Crew-5 launch to the islands, but where have things gone wrong throughout the procedure? However in the case of SpaceX there were other elements that attracted attention to the rocket that was parked on the launch pad next to the Falcon 9 rocket that delivered Crew-5. To the islands. The Starbase facility south of Brownsville, Texas which serves as the primary hub for the development testing and launches of its almost 400-foot-tall Starship rocket has continuously expanded. NASA gave SpaceX a $3 billion contract in 2021 to construct the rocket which can carry people and cargo beyond Earth and is crucial to the agency's mission to return astronauts to the moon the hires demonstrate how keen the company is to launch Starship Shotwell and Jinkosa. Have both worked at SpaceX since it was founded by Musk claims one of the knowledgeable individuals. According to a report Jinkosa visited Starbase for two weeks over the summer to provide Musk and Shotwell with an update on the progress of the construction project and to offer a different perspective given how distant from reality. The company's leadership and first projected an orbital launch attempt to be this person described Jinkosa's results as alarming the first orbital Starship launch was originally scheduled to occur the beginning of December according to information. Supplied to NASA it was critical for SpaceX to obtain a license from the federal government last month so that the business could launch Starships. However SpaceX was compelled to adopt more than 75 environmental mitigation measures as a result of that FAA ruling. If these processes have been completed as debatable last month a request for feedback regarding a revision to the procedure was issued to the FAA. The Starship rocket and its extremely large booster are propelled by Space Access Raptor series of engines and the entire system is designed to be reusable as opposed to the partially reusable parts of the company's Falcon series of rockets. According to Musk the Raptor engine maker was in crisis a year earlier which resulted in the dismissal of a vice president from the program and a subsequent departure from the company. Since then SpaceX has boosted the Raptor production rate to 7 engines per week which is crucial considering that each Starship rocket needs 6 engines and each super heavy booster requires 33. The wrong level of enthusiasm in the firm despite its numerous successes this year. Additionally it plans to put its enormous Starship rocket system into orbit for the first time in early December. Additionally investors have been enthralled by Starlink's expanding network of thousands of internet satellites as a significant source of revenue with commercialized applications. Like the launch of high-speed internet aboard commercial airlines last month. Hopefully you all learned something new. With today's video. Thank you so much for watching bye.